My name is Reverend Honey Bee, and this is my story of experiencing afterlife. On January 8th, 2012, my heart stopped from the illness that had occupied my human vessel. And about 7.31 p.m., it completely stopped. And while my physical body was on the table, I came out of my body and I went up into the room and I looked down. And it was this, the very first experience of it was this lightness, this incredible joyous lightness that felt so free and this exhilaration of joy with it. And when I looked down, my body was very peacefully laying there and it was this very disattached feeling and feeling to it it was just so happy to be out of that form and it was in this free floating space very quickly after that my body came out and i have to say when i say my body i'm referring to spirit body it was still a body that looked like my human body, yet it wasn't physically dense. It was lighter, it was freeing, it was glowing and just very, very free in its essence. So as soon as it came out, it went out of the room, out of the building, this happened very, very quickly. And it went further out and very quickly it came to what I would call like a stratosphere space. And it was, it was a bit dark. And um, this, the very first thing that appeared before me in, in that spirit body that I was in was a figure that was luminous in a golden, pinkish, glorious light. And what we humans recognize as an archangel. And the reason why I say archangel is because it had this glowing, luminous radiance that seemed like as if it was wings. And it was telepathically communicated to me that was Archangel Haniel. And she took her hand and um, put this kind of like a vapor for the lack of better word three rings of vapor that was also the same golden pink very light pale color pink around my spirit body and from there then this lighter area showed up and to my right there was a corridor and to my left there was a corridor and to my right it was this beautiful sound of family members that I knew they were my family and I could see my uncle, I could see my aunt, I could see my grandmother. They were all there and they were clapping and clapping. There was a celebration and I could see just this gorgeous, lush, lush landscape with all of them were there. It was all the corridor and then they were all standing there. And it was this fantastic feeling of being with all of them. They all look so beautiful and radiant. And Archangel Haniel looked at me and she pointed me into the left corridor where it was um, almost like a, again, like an oval shape. And inside of it, uh, seemed like a spiraling of just pure light. The light in it was a, a darker blue um, with like a royal blue and platinum color. And she pointed to me that I needed to go that way. And there wasn't any kind of questioning, negotiation, anything for, for just maybe for a split of a second. Um, I looked to my family and it was just understood that's another time I have to go this way. So without any opportunity to question, I was directed into that um, area. And when I when my my spirit body went in it very quickly, it was like a 
speed of light it was so fast this spiral tunnel of just streaming light that i went through when i came out i came to an area where the first awareness was there was no longer any kind of body of any kind there was no um, spirit body and it was consciousness i was in an area where it was just pure gorgeous phenomena incredible pastel colors of no form yet the best word I could say if you imagine a nebula when you see through the that you know the NASA telescope the pictures they show that doesn't even come anywhere closer but something like that and it was just so vast so quiet so gorgeous so lush so beautiful and and this purity that was just exhilarating in its space just space is the best way that i can say and and liberation and from there my there was the awareness of the awareness of i was there yet i was no longer a body it was the fullness of me in here and I was part of it and it was part of me all were one and it was this return of homecoming and from there the consciousness of mine began to sort of again lack of a better word it's it's very difficult to capture these in words it almost like as if it moved to another area where I would say it was another dimensional consciousness from here and as my consciousness appeared i'm referring consciousness because there is no body it's just consciousness the observer that is seeing everything like a like a movie yet it's inside the movie and it's interacting then when it approached this area and this area seemed like it was this it was brought into a very large room with these very distinct um, what we would call windows but they weren't windows it was it seemed like the um there was a ceiling and it was more of a round ceiling and there were 12 beings that were there these beings were blue in color dark blue and very tall about i would say 18 to 20 feet tall and they were translucent there were no feet you couldn't really see the face either however behind them was this luminous radiant of light it was just gorgeous and as um, so there were six on this side and six on the other side. And when my consciousness arrived, it was telepathically communicated that they had been waiting for me. And I, I had no idea where I even was, what, where this was, yet the feeling inside was incredible. There was this, again, homecoming. I know it, yet I don't know where it is. I just know, I know I, I'm... I'm I've been here before. I don't know where this is, and yet it's home. It's finally home, this, this kind of feeling. So these six um, beings that were there, very quickly, um, there was a space in between them. Within that space, um, this kind of like a screen open up, and this larger screen, and this screen began flashing very, very fast images like at a speed of light, images of many, many, many lifetimes. It wasn't about just this lifetime. It was so many lifetimes, especially very significant historical lifetimes that I was in incarnation. And there were 844 lives to be exact through this that was passing and again it, it was so fast yet everything was 
recognized, understood, telepathically captured in the rules, the different bodies, the different incarnations, the different purposes, and all of that um, was discovered between this very fast flashing of the lives that was shown. And from there, then the, the, the consciousness of mind through these large beings, they brought this thing in the middle in the middle and when i saw it it was my consciousness saw it it was a dna it was the dna of my human self which i didn't know it was the dna of my human self in that exact second yet it was the dna and telepathically they communicated they're going to be adjusting certain things and within that there was this movement of the dna and this golden um, golden strings um, that I want to say um, was being shown and it was so beautiful and telepathically they said they're adjusting my DNA um, for this specific strands that it needed to have for the for the purpose of it again in that second there was no um, I was just in awe of being home, be experiencing, there was not even a thought that I would be sent back at all. So as I was experiencing this, they then stood a little bit behind. It is almost like as if they took a step back and telepathically they introduced themselves as the Octorian Golden Council of 12. And it was so beautiful for me to to telepathically recognize what they're saying, though my human self had no idea what Octorians were, never even heard of it. So from there, then this light in the mid middle began coming um, sort of through. The screen were, were just not there anymore. And this piercing, glowing, blinding light started coming coming closer and closer and getting larger and larger and larger and this light that i'm speaking of there was one thing to see that i did there was this the experience of a love that was with it through its strands of light through its luminous golden gorgeous blinding it was so hard to even be able to even at a conscious awareness level to be able to see it because it was ginormous and beautiful and the love was nothing that my human self had ever experienced not I mean even even being a mother in this incarnation experiencing that love of first becoming a mother was couldn't couldn't even come close to it anywhere near what what was being experienced in this light and as my consciousness moved kind of closer towards it to begin interacting with it and this sort of like figure began to emerge from the light as it began emerging before it took semi of a form like the other ones there, there was a voice, telepathic voice that began speaking to me. And the second I heard that voice, my consciousness remembered this voice through this incarnation a few times that at a very, very significant moments in my life where those simple words and the was said something very specific that changed the direction of my life and I never knew who it was and as the figure began to take more into shape as it came closer from light into a figure it was beloved master living Yeshua the Christ and the the, the I'm sharing this with you, the inside of me, yet the consciousness of me was ecstatic, 
beyond anything. It was so beautiful experiencing the voice finally with the light who he was and he right away telepathically said to me you cannot be with us my child you must go back and share this you'll be with us soon and a few other things he said that i was asked that it remains for me not to share on this platform or anywhere. And with that, when, when he did this with his hand, it was a, a, a combination of many things. One of the things that I want to share in this lifetime review that was shown to me from the many lives, one of the one was very significant about this life was the soul agreement between me my biological mother my biological father my brother why we chose to come in with incarnated with each other before it was very um, uh, clear in the soul agreement why we chose to take these roles for what purpose and why i had to incarnate in the middle east and why all those questions that I, my human self had wondered, everything was revealed to me. It was the book of my inner revelation was open and everything was shown to me in crisp, crystalline clarity. And from there, when he said, when he did this, that you must go back and share this, what I want to share with you, it was the experience of the truth of the divine love that we are made of and we return back to that was the that was the basis of this so without any negotiation without being able to say anything back without being able to capture anything else just like that just like that i was sent back and it was beyond fast like faster than a speed of light faster than the speed of thought faster than anything I could possibly imagine and I was dropped into my body that had died and uh, and it was so fast like the crashing of it and my human self jolted and and when when I opened my eyes it, it was this other presence inside the body that it, it was incredible you know, so from there the entire life changed after i was sent back to my body the very first thing that happened within three days my entire body was healed and uh, the doctors that are working with had they, they couldn't understand like what happened like what ha what happened and that was phenomenal and i began having these um, some of these extraordinary abilities as a child and my first nde experience which ties into this the day i became a superhero that was when i was seven in a fatal car crash i had certain abilities and after this other abilities began showing the the thing that happened after was very difficult to be able to talk to people for a long time i couldn't speak because it was like, how do I even, how do I even share what happened? There was also a, a feeling of, um, again, really isolation and um, feeling um, almost foreign and embarrassed, ashamed. How do I say this to people? Yet the communication began because. I was told very quickly after that third day I was sent back my body, I have to go on this thing called a mission. This mission was on 40 specific places on earth. I had to go for what was called a planetary mission and to bring this frequency of the crystalline love onto the planet. So the message that I have is that we are eternal 
as souls. The soul just does not die. The human body does transition from one form to another, and the soul continues. The soul has many journeys, and it will come back again and again. And this idea of death truly is not real because the soul continuously goes and it experiences not just after life, it experiences the fullness coming back to its origin of light, that love. And we come from love, we go back to love. And the thing that was so clear to me is come back and walk with love, not the human love, the divine love, truly bring it in, embody it and share it with your fellow brothers and sisters. And that has been my mission ever since. And I'm really thankful to have had this opportunity to share my story with you today.